Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another session for AWS and in today's session we will learn about CloudFront. It's going to be totally visualized so please watch it till the end. So if you are ready, let's begin. So before moving on to AWS CloudFront, we need to discuss something which is really very important that is CDN or what we call as Content Delivery Network. So if we would check the definition for CDN, it says a content delivery network or a content distribution network, which is CDN, is geographically distributed network of proxy servers and their data centers. Okay, so CDNs are also termed or can also be termed as a solution that provides a geographically distributed group of servers that would work together to provide fast delivery of internet content. So when we divide CDN, that is content delivery network, the content here can be anything that is like static, that is can be like a HTML or image file or video files or documents or anything that you want, which is static. Okay, so before moving forward, let's understand why we need CDN and then we will move on to CloudFront. So let's suppose you are a developer or a host that wants to host his application and let's suppose your application is where you host memes and some wallpapers, image files and some videos as well. So you create a server and you host your service or application publicly so that users across the region or globe can access your application. So this is your application and you have hosted it in Mumbai and the people are able to use it. Okay, so this is basically what we call as a single distribution or a single server architecture. And after that, what happens is your application got a very good rating and it blew up the internet and people across multiple regions started using your application. So your application went global. Now what happened is that when people who lived in other regions started using your application, which is hosted in Mumbai. And they started complaining that your application is slow to access and it takes a huge amount of time to load. And they started experiencing lag and they were really unhappy. And this is one of the very important points to remember when you host your application in a single server distribution. So as you can see here, people started experiencing slow performance and lags as well. And this is a very important point to remember when you host your applications in a single server distribution. So because if your user base grows, it will be very hard for you to serve your clients or users because there will be a very big challenge with latency and availability. So what is the solution for this? So then you played smart and you decided to move towards a content delivery network to host your application. And that is where we will try and solve the problem of users facing lag and slow response with your application. So content delivery network, a content delivery network or content distribution network that is CDN is geographically distributed network of proxy servers and their data centers. And the goal is to provide high availability and performance by distributing the service or the application that you have spatially relative to end users. So as you can see in the visualization here, what we are trying to do here is that we will be placing our proxy servers or data centers closer to our customers, which will be hosting our static files cached on the servers itself. And that way we don't need to serve all the dynamic content across the globe. Okay. And we can just serve them by placing all the static files closer to them. So you might ask, what's the use of this? So CDN node can be deployed in multiple locations and they help us by reducing bandwidth costs, improving page load time and increasing global availability of content. And the best part is that you don't have to host a whole new server near your customer. You can use a CDN to improve your application's availability. That's so cool. And that's what happens when you use a CDN. So now when we compare both of these architectures, the single server distribution is mostly useful when you have a low request and it's close to your customers so that it performs better. But with CDN, you can place your proxy servers close to your users so that the static content that you want to host like image, video files can be accessible to the users 
at a much faster rate than the one we had with the single server okay and with cdn you should remember that the content is replicated and stored throughout the cdn so the user can access the data that is stored at a location that is geographically closest to the user this is the most efficient part of this and this is more efficient than the traditional method of storing content on just one single central server so with cdn i want to repeat this once again that the user accesses a copy of the data near to the client as opposed to all clients accessing the same central server in order to avoid bottlenecks near the server okay so i hope it was clear if you want i can repeat this once again so what happens here is the user accesses a copy of the data near to the client as opposed to all clients accessing the same central server in order to avoid bottlenecks near the server okay so i hope this was clear let's move on okay so here we are and let's begin with aws cloudfront now that you are aware of what a cdn is you should remember cloudfront is a cdn service from aws and not just the only cdn it's like even if you don't use aws you can still provision yourself a cdn by using a cdn provider like cloudflare okay so amazon cloudfront is a fast highly secure and programmable content delivery network or CDN and as AWS tells us that Amazon CloudFront is a fast content delivery network service that securely delivers data, videos, applications and as well as APIs to the customers globally with low latency and helps with high transfer speeds. And CloudFront is integrated with AWS so what it means is that CloudFront is integrated with both physical locations that are directly connected to the AWS global infrastructure and as well as other services we have for AWS. Okay, and the best part is that CloudFront works seamlessly with services including AWS Shield for DDoS mitigation, AWS S3, Elastic Load Balancing or Amazon EC2 as an origin for your application. And origin is actually the source of your content. So it can be your S3 bucket or it can be a load balancer or as well it can be an instance that you can use to deliver your content uh, which acts as an origin point for your CloudFront. And if you wish to run a customized code close to your customers you can use Lambda at Edge so that you can provision or provide customer specific customization. And if you use AWS origins such as Amazon S3, EC2 or elastic load balancing, you don't pay for any data transferred between these services and CloudFront. Okay, and it integrates with AWS Web Application Firewall. And if you don't know about Web Application Firewalls, I'll just, uh, what do you say, tell one line or so for this one. So AWS WAF or what we call as Web Application Firewall is a web application firewall that helps protect your web applications or APIs against common web exploits that may affect availability or compromise security or consume excessive resources. And when it comes to usage, the ways you can create your CDN with CloudFront, uh, you can use the APIs, you can use AWS Management Console, or you can use AWS CloudFormation, CLIs and SDKs. And with CloudFront, AWS gives you a pay-as-you-go pricing model with no upfront cost, no long-term contracts needed, or required and support for the CDN is included in your existing AWS support subscription. And there are other benefits with using CloudFront. The first one is like it can be used to secure and accelerate your WebSocket traffic as well as API calls and CloudFront supports proxy methods such as post, put, options, delete and patch and is already integrated with Amazon API Gateway by default. That's the sweetest part and the CloudFront allows you to communicate with external HTTPS and talk to internal HTTPS backends as well. So that's a very good advantage that we have when we're using CloudFront. And to do all this, so as to deliver content to end users with low latency or lower latency, Amazon CloudFront uses a global network of 216 points of presence, that is POP, and out of them 205 edge locations are there and 11 regional edge caches are there in 84 cities across 42 countries. Okay, so you read the statement and uh, but you might ask like what are edge locations and what are regional edge locations. So let's check them out. 
So as we discuss CDN and I hope you remember that with CDN what we do is we place our proxy servers closer to our customers so that we can store or cache most frequently accessed static files and deliver the static content in a fast and effective way. Okay, so here as when with uh, CloudFront as this is also a CDN, we have our proxy servers placed close to our customers. But what is the edge location? Okay, so an edge location is where end users access services located at AWS. Okay, so they are located in most of the major cities around the world and are specifically used by CloudFront, that is a CDN, to distribute content to end users to reduce latency. So remember, an edge location is just a CDN's way of hosting AWS services closer to your customers so that we can reduce the latency for the users. So what is the edge location comprised of then? So you can think edge location to be a collection of physical servers within a data center that can help you access the AWS services so that your users don't have to spend more time accessing the same resource located thousands of miles apart from their house or from the place they are actually trying to access it. So as you can see, we have our edge locations placed near London and in Australia and in Africa and people are accessing resources with the help of the edge location closer to them. Okay, and you see one more thing here, which is regional edge cache. So what is that? So regional edge caches are CloudFront locations that are deployed globally close to your viewers. They are located between your origin server, okay, and the POPs, which is the CloudFront points of presence. Okay, that is the global edge location that serves content directly to the viewers. So the biggest difference that you should understand here is it's a regional cache for edge location, not an edge location itself. It's a cache. So I hope everyone knows what a cache is. No worries. So a cache is a hardware or a software component that stores data so that future requests for that data can be served faster. So let's suppose uh, you are repeatedly accessing a video file, like if you're watching a movie. So wouldn't it be awesome that you can access that video and watch it as fast as possible? So what the cache will do is it will store that file temporarily near your location for a short period of time or a temporary period of time so that you can access it as fast as possible. Okay, so that you can access it as fast as possible after your first attempt. Okay, so once you access it for the first time, it will store it in the cache and then when you access it for the next time, so the second time or the third time, it will be faster for you to access. And as I said, data stored in a cache might be the result of an earlier computation or a copy of the data stored elsewhere. And coming back to the regional cache, uh, regional edge caches have a larger cache than the individual POP. So objects actually remain in the cache longer at the nearest regional edge cache location. And this helps keep more of your content closer to your viewers, reducing the need for CloudFront to go back to your origin server and improving overall performance for your viewers. Okay, so coming back to the visualization here, the main origin is in USA, where we are exposing our EC2 or S3 for people across the globe. So even though our users are in India or Australia, they will be able to access the content at a much faster rate compared to if the application was hosted in a single server distribution. Okay, so I hope it was clear and you got the point that edge locations are placement for the proxy servers and regional edge caches cache the frequently accessed data by the user for better performance. Okay, so let's move on. So see this image here and you can realize or you can understand that this is so amazing that how Amazon has spread its wings across the globe as you can see, Amazon provides CloudFront with 216 points of presence, among which 205 are edge locations and 11 are the regional edge caches, which spans over across like 84 cities across 42 countries. So it's good that even if you stay at any corner of the world, you will be able to make use of AWS CloudFront. So be worry free. <laughs> and I have already told you what you can host as your origin, but we haven't discussed it in depth. So let's check that out. Okay, so let's check the answer for what are the origins that you can set for CloudFront to serve your data. Okay, so if we try and understand what exactly an origin is. So an origin is a location where content is stored. 
or yeah, where your content is stored and from which CloudFront gets content to serve to the users or the viewers. So it's basically something that you tell CloudFront that this is the content and please make it available to the users. Okay, and for that, we need to specify the origin. So the first one is S3 origin config and you can use this type to specify an Amazon S3 bucket that is not configured with a static website hosting. So I'm sure that you are aware an S3 bucket can be used as a static website for which you have to set the static website hosting property where you have to specify your bucket and choose the option like use this bucket to host a website. For that type of S3 buckets, which are a part of the static website hosting, you cannot set them as a CloudFront origin. Okay. And the other one is custom origin config. This type of origin can be used for content actually that is based on containers or HTTP servers. And the other one that we have here is custom origin config. And this type of origin can be used for content that is based on containers or HTTP servers. And for the first one that we have here is Amazon S3 bucket that is configured with static website hosting. So in this one, for the custom origin config, you can basically use that bucket which is configured with static website hosting as a origin. Okay, where we actually don't specify any S3 bucket which is actually configured with the static website hosting. So for S3 origin config, you cannot use a S3 bucket that is configured with the static website hosting, but in custom origin config, you can use that. Okay, and you can use elastic load balancing and you can specify a load balancer as well for your origin. And we can use AWS Elemental Media Package, which reliably prepares and protects your videos for delivery over the internet. And as well, the one you might want to, that is the HTTP server running on an Amazon EC2 instance or any other kind of host. And a very good news for people who want to try this out, Amazon gives you a free tier account. As you know, you must create it. And with that, you get 50 GB of data transfer out for 12 months and that is free and 2 million HTTP or HTTP requests each month for one year. That's huge. I think we can all start hosting our applications on AWS. Let me know what your ideas are in the comment section below so we can think of creating a new product. So if this was clear, let's move on. So now let's learn how does CloudFront work and serve requests. I will try and keep this very simple. So you are the user who is consuming the application from your house or office or as a product user. And we have our CloudFront origin as an EC2 instance or it can be a S3 bucket where we have our image files and other services. Uh, so when you make a GET request like something like hello.jpg to access the hello.jpg it first reaches the edge location and then it forwards that request to the origin and then what it does is that it gets cached in the edge location. And then it gets sent back to the user or the requester. And you can set the caching time frame in the configuration as well. Okay, so I hope you understood this one. So client A, what it does is, or user A, it sends a request to get this file. So what edge location does is, uh, for the first time, it actually checks with the origin if it has the files. Okay, and it actually sends it back to the user. Along with that, what it does, it actually caches the request or the content or the data that you have in the local cache of the edge location. And now let's suppose another user sends a request for the same file which he or she had requested before. It will check for the file in the edge cache. Okay, this is the edge cache. And if the file is already cached in the edge location, it comes back to him or her directly from the edge cache without having the need to talk to the origin itself. So it will not go here again. If it's found here, it will just go back to him. And it will be very fast than the first time it was requested. And what regional edge cache help is they have a larger capacity to cache more than any individual edge location. So your objects actually remain in cache longer at the nearest regional edge cache location. And it reduces the need for the cloud front to go back to your origin server and thus improving overall performance for the viewers. So here what happens is if you request for an object, okay, let's suppose we have hello.jpg. It first checks for the file in the edge location or the edge cache. If the file is already cached in the edge location, it comes back to him directly okay, from the edge cache. And if it is not, then it checks the regional edge cache. And if the object is present there, then it is good and it is fine. If not, it will reach out to the CloudFront origin and serve you the content. Okay, so now you should understand that with a CDN, you don't directly talk to the origin, but you talk to them via a proxy server that is your edge location. And where does the content get cached? 
it gets cached in the local cache of the edge location and also at the regional edge cache for a longer period of time. Okay, so I hope this was clear. Let's move on. So now let's check something that's really important for the exam. That is how we can restrict our users. Okay, or how we can restrict access to our Amazon S3 content by using an origin access identity. Okay, this is really important for the exam. Any questions comes from the CloudFront? I think this might come in the exam. Okay, so let's suppose we have our AWS cloud infrastructure and we have our S3 bucket uh, and we have a lot of users trying to access our S3 files. But let's suppose not all of the users are eligible to access our content. So we protect our data by using an origin access identity with an S3 bucket policy. So if you don't know about OIA, don't worry. So an OIA or an origin access identity is used to or used for sharing private content via CloudFront. Okay, so we know that we use OAI to share the private content with CloudFront or through CloudFront. So what it does here, it acts like a virtual user identity. So when we correlate it with CloudFront, CloudFront becomes an anonymous user who has access to the objects or the data everybody else has access to. Give the privilege to the OIA by changing permissions either on your Amazon S3 bucket or on the files in your bucket so that only the origin access identity has read permissions or has permissions to read and download the object. So when you combine both origin access identity and S3 bucket policy, you can restrict users to access your content that is served on your origin. So as a user or users who access a specific file from the edge location, which is in Mumbai, okay, it will check with the OAI that does this user have permission to access. So when the user accesses your S3 file through CloudFront, the CloudFront origin access identity gets the file on behalf of the user. And if your user requests file directly from your Amazon S3 bucket or the, using the URL, they are denied access. And that is how users are restricted to access the file and they are restricted to access the file only through the origin access identity. So origin access identity will act as a virtual user which you can configure using your CloudFront and by the help of your S3 bucket policies you can allow that particular user that yes you have access to this particular content and then the same thing happens with the users who access the file globally. Let's suppose we have the users in London or Sydney or Los Angeles they will face the same kind of scrutiny when we are there trying to access the particular file from S3 as that S3 bucket is our origin. So I hope this was clear and I was clear in explaining how we restrict access to users using edge locations. Okay, so let's move on. Then. Okay, so the next important thing to understand is how can we use our EC2 instance as an origin for edge locations. It's very simple. If you have your EC2 instance and you want to make it an origin for your edge location, you are already aware of how we allow access to EC2 instances, isn't it? Yes, we make use of security groups. So with security groups, there are two things. One is inbound rule and the other one is outbound rule. So what we can do here is we can add the public IP of the edge location to the inbound rule of the EC2 instance so that the users can only reach to the EC2 instance through the edge locations. So as you can see here, we have the public access and here is the edge location and we can allow the public IP of the edge location using the security group for the EC2 instance. So the next important thing to understand is how we can use ALB or what we call as application load balancer as an origin for CloudFront. So here we have a public facing application load balancer or ALB which acts as a load balancing mechanism for our EC2 instances. So as a ALB, you know ALB has a single point of contact that is a DNS through which traffic is divided among EC2 instances when we configure them by adding them to the target groups. So here as well, ALB has its own security group and here as well you can add the IP of the edge location so that it can be accessed through the ALB itself. So this was pretty simple. So create your own edge location, then add it to your ALB or EC2, then enjoy the widespread popularity. Okay. Okay. So let me know how you would create your edge locations. And if you haven't created your free tier account, please do it now and practice. Okay. So here as well, as you can see, we have the public access, we have the edge location, and we are trying to put the public IP of the edge location in the security group for the application load balancer, which is the internet facing application load balancer. And that actually is bound together with the target groups that we have specified. 
with the public EC2 instances. Okay, so now let's see how we can restrict users in certain locations for accessing web content served by my CloudFront distribution. So here you can use geo restrictions as known as uh, also known as actually geo blocking to prevent users in specific geographic locations that you are distributing through a CloudFront web distribution. So to use geo distributions or geo restrictions. So the first one is to use a CloudFront geo restriction. The second one is by using a third party geolocation service. So the first one, the geo restriction or the CloudFront geo restriction, we have two things here. One is blacklist and one is whitelist. Okay. So in whitelist, what happens is you can allow your users to access your content only if they are in one of the countries on the whitelist of your approved countries. Okay. So let's suppose you add the countries into your whitelist, then they will be allowed access. And in blacklist, what happens? You can prevent your users from accessing your content if they are in one of the countries on the blacklist of the banned countries. So this is a very funny example. Like let's suppose PewDiePie released a video congratulations, which he released worldwide. But as this got criticized in India, what YouTube can do is it can just add that PewDiePie's video to the blacklist column and restrict all users from India to watch the video. Okay. So then nobody in India or from India can watch it. I'm just telling like as an example, this cannot be like uh, a straightforward logical explanation of uh, how it actually works. But this is the general idea. Like what are the use cases it can have? Okay. So what is the process to this? First, what you need to do is you need to add a whitelist that contains only the name of the locations. Next, when you send a request, DNS routes the request to the CloudFront edge locations. Then edge location determines that the user is actually or is it allowed or it is determining that whether the user is not allowed or allowed to download your content or allowed to read your content or not allowed based on that it makes a decision and if you are not allowed then and if you try to access or try to access that object CloudFront returns an HTTP status code of 403 that is forbidden to the user. And the second option is to use a third party geolocation service. So CloudFront geo restriction feature lets you control the distribution of your content at the country level for files or all files that you are distributing with the given web distribution. And if you have geographic restrictions on where your content can be distributed and the restrictions don't follow your country's boundaries, you can combine CloudFront with a third party geolocation service. This can allow you to control access to your content based not only on the country, but also based on the city, zip, postal code or even latitude and longitude. Let's suppose I don't want it to be Bangalore, then I can put the city name Bangalore and I can restrict and it can restrict it to IPs as well. So when you use third party geolocation, it is recommended that you use CloudFront signed URLs. Don't worry, this is something that is important for SAAC02. We will be discussing about it and we will be discussing about CloudFront signed URLs in the next chapter. Okay, so I hope this was clear. Let's move on then. So in the next session, we will do a hands-on demo for CloudFront using S3 buckets and EC2 instances. So please don't miss out on that. So I hope you liked the video and if you did, please like, share and comment on what you liked and what you didn't. And I'll meet you in the next episode of AWS. Until then, it's Pythonic signing off.